after that collision. Right? And that, that change in angular velocity you can calculate it using the law of conservation of angular velocity. Probably, again, if you took a basic physics course or two, uh, you would be familiar with those things from that course. So this is what happens if you put them all into a computer program. Uh, you can play with this system. And I'm going to show you just a couple of videos. So I, I didn't have time to program this one, but I'll show you what it looks like when other people programmed it. So let me show you. Uh, let's start with that one. This is not my program, I got it off the internet, but they have a bunch of these blocks and they had a couple of balls roll into it and uh, so look at how real this looks. It's quite This is the kind of simulation you can run with a program that, again, has only those ingredients, the ones that you're familiar with from your physics courses. As long as you know a little bit of programming, you can make a simulation like that. Uh, and you can, you can make all kinds of variations on it. You can put those blocks in different positions. Let's run it again. That's cool enough. So you can sort of see, it's, it's a lot happening at once, but you can see that when those blocks collide with each other, they bounce off and they change the way that they spin. Uh, when they hit the ground, the same thing. So it, it, in my opinion, it's very realistic. Except in real life, you probably wouldn't be able to stack that many blocks at once. This video has an entire uh, tutorial in it to show you how to make that simulation if you want to using a, a 3D editing software, Blender. I looked at the, I got this on YouTube and I looked at the comments underneath and somebody said, why do you hate cubes? <laughs> Okay, so I think that's all that I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for your attention.